What is up guys, JT Tapius with the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan and if this is your first time tuning into my channel, I'd love for you to subscribe so that every time we release a new video, you will be the first one to know. Today we're going to be speaking about one of the most interesting questions that I get on a daily basis. JT, how can I lose weight without exercising? Can I lose weight without exercising? That's what we're going to be speaking about today. Ready? Let's go. All right, so the popular question, how do I lose weight without exercising? This is interesting because if you've noticed and you've been to your local gym, the vast majority of people you see at the gym are out of shape and you wonder, why are they out of shape? And then the other person would probably say, well, that's why they're there, right? But here's the interesting thing. Year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five go by and the same suspects are there and they're not changing and you're wondering what is happening are they not lifting enough are they not staying long enough are they doing the wrong exercises is their form not correct maybe they need to hire a personal trainer i was a personal trainer for 20 plus years and i had clients that were in the gym working with me five and six and sometimes even seven days a week and they weren't getting in shape this was early on in my career this was incredibly frustrating to me because they worked so hard, they had their, their watch that was calculating their calories, they had good calorie burns, they were burning 800, 1000 calories, they were drenched in sweat, they were sore the next day, and yet they looked exactly the same on year one, two, and three, and you would think this is a, a big uh, 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 you know, thing that you're telling us here, JT, you're telling us that your methods don't work. No. Early on in my career, what I didn't understand was that nutrition played the most important part in people actually changing their body composition. And so the saying that you can't outrun and you can't outwork out a bad diet is very, very true. Right around year four or five, I started to get frustrated and I started to think, you know, what is the big uh, change? What is going to create the big change for my clients? And that's when I started to get really, really involved with nutrition. And as soon as we started incorporating nutrition protocols to our programs, people literally took off overnight. I mean, six weeks, three months in, people looked radically different. And these were people that had been working out for years and working out really, really hard. The challenge is the word diet has a lot of negative connotations to it, right? Most people think of the three first letters in the word diet. They feel like they're going to die, right? They feel like they're, they're going to hurt too bad. And so then the question is, JT, how can I not exercise and how can I not suffer while I'm trying to get to this weight goal? How do I lose weight without going through all the pain and all the struggle and having to work out and doing all the things that I don't necessarily want to do right now? I think that's a great question. The concept of calories in, calories out is very real. Weight loss is a mathematical equation. We talk about a deficit, a balance, and a surplus. Calorie deficit is when you burn more calories than you actually bring in. Calorie balance is when you bring in sufficient calories to sustain your current weight. And calorie surplus is when you actually gain weight, which is obviously what most people are not trying to do. And so then the question becomes, what are the easiest ways to get into a deficit? Glad you asked. One of my favorite strategies is called steady state cardio or slow burn cardio. This is literally a brisk walk that has a mathematical equation, but I don't want to get too complicated today. I want to give you the basics so that you can get started and get your results really, really quickly. And so all you have to do is for 45 minutes, ideally one hour, if you can go on an empty stomach even better, Please consult your physician before you do any kind of physical activity. But if you have no problem exercising on an empty stomach, this is what I prefer. There's lots of different schools of thinking in regards to this. You're going to hear a lot of gurus say you don't need to be fasted. I personally have seen better results for my clients while they're fasted. And so 45 minutes to one hour of a brisk walk where you can maintain a conversation. If you're out of breath, you're probably going too fast. Here's why. The science basically says that when you are running, sprinting, biking, or out of breath, your main source of energy is oxygen. When you're actually having a brisk walk, your body still requires a source of energy. So what it does, it goes in and it taps into glycogen storages. The word glyco means sugar. It means we're combusting that 
energy that is stored in the form of sugar. And that's exactly where we want to be. So 45 minutes to an hour is the ideal protocol for fasted brisk walk cardio. That is one of my favorite strategies. Number two, if you can fast, meaning you can cut out nutrients for a period of time, that also really works. Not necessarily because you're not eating or because you're not consuming calories, but more so because you're actually cutting out on snack time. People snack unconsciously more than they actually know or think, and they end up consuming more calories than they should. I often say that most of the time, what gets people in trouble is not what they're eating, but more so how, how much they're eating. Their portions are what's really, really getting them into trouble. And so cutting back on that snacking really, really helps. And fasting is one of those ways, one of those strategies that you can do that. A 16-8 is the most popular protocol out there, meaning for 16 hours you fast, eight hour window of eating. If you're not there yet, if you've never fasted before, I don't recommend that. You want to start slowly. And so the way to start slowly with fasting is basically if you usually eat breakfast at eight, you can push it out one week till nine and the following week till 10. And then you progressively start moving into that 16 hour fast and eight hour window of eating. That is my favorite protocol for weight loss. It allows your digestive system to rest. It taps into your substracts, meaning the calories that you ate the night before. You utilize a lot of that energy and it's one of the most um, quickest forms and probably one of the most popular uh, forms of, of, of calorie deficit right now is you hear it all over the place, IF, intermittent fasting. And uh, I like it for many, many reasons, particularly for the cutting out on the snacking part. Number three, you want to pick a small recipient. As I said earlier, usually it's not what people are eating, it's the amounts they're eating, their portions. And so cutting back on your portions is huge. We're not calorie counting. We're not counting macros. We're not counting points. We're not doing any of those count pointing systems. And so one of the fastest ways to do that is go to Amazon, buy yourself a little recipient like this, a little Tupperware like this, which is microwavable. In this big area here, you want to add your protein. And here you want to add two portions of fibrous carbs. Your fibrous carbs are your vegetables, your salads. I like green leafy veggies. These are what we call your phytonutrients. So these two recipients here, you're putting uh, fibrous carbs in, proteins here. This is about six to eight ounces of protein. And then you want to pick a healthy fat like an olive oil, coconut oil. Uh, you want to do maybe a, a low calorie dressing, your butters, your oils. All these are considered your fats. So no more than two tablespoons per meal, right? Maybe you want to add a little bit of flavor there to your fibrous carbs, to your salads with those fats. And if you stick to these and you're doing, eventually you're doing that 16 8 and you're only eating three times. Uh, a day, then you're cutting back significantly on your calories and you're creating a deficit that way. And my friend, that is a great way to get into a calorie deficit. My last point for you is about hunger pangs. No one wants to be hungry. So then the question is, JT, what happens when I get hungry? I have two strategies, one that's very popular <laughs> and one that's not popular at all, but hear me out. Coffee is the popular one, okay? Coffee acts as an appetite suppressant. I'm a bigger fan of black coffee because it does exactly what it needs to do. It acts as a stimulant. It, uh, it allows your brain to fire up and it really, really subsides that hunger, okay? So this is one of the most popular ways to deal with hunger pangs. Number two is the unpopular one and the one you're gonna put your hands up in the air and say, oh my God, JT, I can't believe you're suggesting this. Hey, I am simply giving you strategies. You make the decision. I have no problems with what I'm about to say because nicotine gum is benign. There is nothing wrong with it. Is nicotine addicting? Yes. And so is coffee. But as long as you get away from it for five days or six days, you cut the addiction process out and it actually really, really helps. So if you're having hunger pangs, two milligrams of gum three times a day is the ideal dose. You're not going to get addicted with so little and it's really going to help. Now, once again, that is the unpopular uh, uh, a strategy and I get it. A lot of people put their hands up when I say that. They're like, oh my God, how would you want, why would you want me to get addicted to nicotine? It's something very mild and actually coffee is a bigger stimulant than the nicotine gum. And once again, my friend, it's going to help you stay away from those hunger pangs. My friends, that was four amazing ways on how to lose weight without exercising. Notice that I talked to you about no exercise whatsoever. This thing here was not mentioned at all, okay? Now, 
The idea is that eventually, when you've built the strong foundation, you've created the deficit, you feel like you're in your right weight and your right body fat percentages, then yes, my friend, you should start working out, but not before that, because we humans have a tendency to want to check the box and going to the gym becomes the easiest thing, the most fun thing to do, and then we shun the thing that needs to be taken care of first, and that is your nutrition. If your nutrition is on point, everything else will come together. Guys, my name is JT Tapias, professional fitness life coach with the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. Once again, my friends, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe so that every time we put out information like this, you will be the first one to know. I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao, ciao.